Hi, it's Dr. Centeno, and today I'd like to talk about maximizing stem cell yield from bone marrow aspirate. You know, this is a topic where there's a, just a, a ton of urban myths and legends and misinformation. So I'd like to really focus on what we know and what we don't know. And over the last decade, since about 2005, our research group has performed more than 3,500 bone marrow aspirations and has tested many different techniques to increase yield. Uh, in addition, we've obviously read what others have published and synthesized those two to come up with techniques to try to get the maximum number of stem cells out of bone marrow, at least on the draw side. Now, this lecture won't cover how to perform a bone marrow aspiration. It won't cover how to use imaging guidance to do it properly, which is an absolute standard of care issue, i.e. these should never be performed without imaging guidance. That's below the standard of care. Uh, I'm not going to get into how to keep the patient comfortable or how to process the bone marrow to get the most stem cells out of the bone marrow but simply how to get the most stem cells out of a draw uh, and how to maximize that yield. So again, won't cover how to get the most stem cells out once you've done the best job of getting it out of the bone marrow cavity. And unlike many of the lectures that I do, this one's gonna be focused a little bit more on physicians than my usual presentations on the website which are many times patient slash physician focused. So bone marrow contains a lot of stem cells to, or that can help orthopedic injuries. Uh, endothelial progenitors, mesenchymal stem cells, hematopoietic stem cells, platelets, osteochondral reticular cells, mu cells, macrophages, parasites, etc. And we're going to focus today on how do we maximize mesenchymal stem cell yield, which seems to be the general focus of all of the papers published in this area. So the first obvious question is, where do you draw from? Uh, iliac crest yields about two times mesenchymal stem cells over the tibia. Uh, so we're gonna focus here on the iliac crest. And these are the draw sites we'll be talking about, the PSIS region. Uh, so you can see right there, uh, that's where we're focused in this lecture. So one of the first things that you should recognize is that there's a thick and thin area in uh, the PSIS. Uh, so basically you've got this thick area over here and you've got this thin area over there. So obviously the best you can do is to try to cannulate this thicker area. Now, there's not a lot of room in there. So many of these technologies that have been developed to go and try to uh, maximize stem cell yield by doing all sorts of fancy things, don't recognize that we're talking about a very, very so small space So if we wanted here. to develop different strategies about how to maximize the number of mesenchymal stem cells out of a bone or aspirate, we first have to look at where the mesenchymal stem cells live to begin with, because if we don't know that, uh, we won't be able to maximize yield. And as you can see here, uh, they, they live uh, just underneath the bone cortex, and they live uh, around the blood vessels. So, uh, those are the two general locations. So there are two opportunities to dislodge these bone marrow mesenchymal stem cells. One is subcortical, meaning just below the cortex. The other is perivascular. So as we put the trocar in, uh, and as it just penetrates the cortex, if we apply suction pressure there, we can pull some off the back of the bone and as we go through deeper into the bone marrow tissue, 
we can pull some off of the blood vessels or pull the perivascular mesenchymal stem cells off. So every time you enter the cortex and every time you drive any depth and draw, you're dislodging cortical and perivascular MSCs. Now again, note based on the cross section to the right, there isn't far to go. So this isn't, there really isn't an opportunity to do a lot of driving around in the bone marrow space. So we'll talk today about some different draw techniques high versus low volume versus site number, meaning the number of sites, one, two, three, four, et cetera. We'll talk about syringe size, whether or not there are cannibalization effects. We'll talk about the trocar type and then overall strategies. So one of the most outrageous, ridiculous things I see happening out there and regrettably uh, about 90% of the physicians that have taken weekend stem, stem cell courses put together by bedside machine manufacturers have been taught that they should basically draw from one site and draw a higher volume of marrow. Now, there's only really one rationale for doing this. Uh, it's that it's easier for the doctor. But we've known since 1990 that this reduces mesenchymal stem cell content because all you're really doing is drawing peripheral blood. The bone marrow space is the world's best vascular access. So in fact, all of these studies show, as well as our internal data, that the more sites at lower volume you draw, the more stem cells you get. So this is our data that's uh, unpublished. Again, it shows that if we look at the average number of mesenchymal stem cells coming out of three to six milliliter draw versus a nine to 11, the good news is that you do get more by going a little bit higher in volume. Um, so that's the good news. And that multiple sites having the same volume will provide more stem cells. But if you go too much above 10 cc's, you're not going to get many more stem cells. So there's a declining return with additional volume. Well, the next question would be, can drawing in smaller syringes help? Uh, there was a recent study by Hernigau et al. Uh, it was only a 30 patient study, and it used 10 versus 50 ml syringe sizes. Now, I'm not sure who uses 50 ml syringe sizes because we've never ever used a syringe that big. They're really unwieldy to use. But they did seem to find a lot more stem cells when you used a smaller 10 ml syringe. Now, we tried to replicate this by using 5 ml, so going a little smaller because Hernigau's idea was that you had more pressure and you were pulling off more stem cells with a smaller syringe and a 30 ml syringe, which is the one that we normally use, and we couldn't replicate this data at all. So uh, it is probably a function of using a 50 ml syringe, which is an unwieldy beast, uh, which I wouldn't recommend doing. So what, you, what can you conclude from this? Uh, either use a 10 or a 30, uh, but a 50 is not a good idea. Well, here's another question. Does one site cannibalize the next? For instance, does one site placed about two centimeters from the next draw take from that other site? Meaning that if it did, we'd have to make sure to either put our sites very far apart, our draw sites very far apart, or uh, we would need to uh, really recognize that the second, third, and fourth sites are not drawing nearly as many cells. So if you look at the first site, you'll see that there's clearly the most coming out of the first site. Uh, and then the second five MLs produces less. 
If you look at the second site, you've got um, more coming out of the first than the second, but there's less coming out of that second site. Um, and then at the third site, more coming out in the first five mLs, the second. And by the fourth site, it looks like the bone marrow space in general is becoming a bit depleted. But one of the nice things about what we found was uh, first, that the information agreed with other authors. The first couple mLs get you the most uh, number of cells. The second 5 mL site uh, tends to get you less. But that the cannibalization rate, the amount that one site affected the other, was fairly minimal, about 20% or so. So the good news is that if you draw from many sites up to about 10 cc's, you're not dramatically hurting the, uh, the total number of MSCs you're going to pull. So if we look at volume versus sites and the conclusion of all of that that we just talked about, three to five sites per side uh, for a total of six to 10 sites uh, at a draw volume of 10 to 15 mLs max per site is about where you should be to maximize stem cell yield. Again, do not draw from a single site at high volume. That is a dumb idea. Uh, there is no literature to support that it will work and give you the most number of stem cells. So it means that you have to go to multiple sites. If we look at the trocar type, uh, what was interesting is that side ports uh, are pretty common these days. We see all these cool trocars that cost a bit more money and they've got these cool side ports. You know, they look good. It looks like, you know, some sort of sports car of trocars. Um, but uh, in essence, this has already been looked at back, way back in 2008. The side ports did not produce any more stem cells. Uh, it would make sense why they wouldn't, uh, which I'll discuss in a second. So again, there are lots of new trocars coming out, none of which have any substantial data to prove that they're getting a lot more stem cells than just the standard three to five site draw on either side. So I personally would not spend more than 20 bucks on a trocar under any circumstances. How about these techniques? I've seen these more recently being taught, what I call the deep dive technique and the stick shift technique. Well, we have no data on either of these. There's no published studies showing that they produce more stem cells. So let's at least look at whether or not there's any face validity, the concept that they can get more stem cells. So let's look at the marrow deep dive technique. The concept here is that the doctor is entering at one site and trying to drive through the thicker part of the marrow Typically, the doctor will pull small volumes as he goes. So he'll advance a little bit, pull a couple cc's, maybe five or 10, advance a little bit, uh, pull five or 10 cc's, et cetera. Um, now, obviously, you could only ever do this under x-ray guidance, and you can come from the other direction as well. We've tested this technique and it didn't seem to get more cells. So let's look at why that is. If we analyze the general concept, the physicians that use this technique are using it to be able to only go in once through the bone. But since we have important amounts of MSCs that are subcortical underneath the bone, MSCs are being left, quote, on the table, meaning that they're being left there and not gotten because we're only going through one side in the bone. And the additional perivascular MSCs that are being obtained by driving through the tissue could just as easily be obtained by cannulating multiple sites. So rather than going this way, you could easily just do that, cannulate multiple sites, uh, and you'd end up picking up more MSCs that way, simply because, or certainly as many, because you're also getting the subcortical MSCs every time you enter the bone. Well, let's look at the stick shift technique analysis. Concept here is that you're driving through the bone 
uh, you're pulling back a little bit, repositioning, pulling back a little bit, repositioning. Now, one of the first problems with the stick shift technique is that if you look at the lever arm involved, a big movement at the skin is giving you an extremely tiny amount of motion and change uh, once you're through the bone, uh, since you're cannulating the same bone site. So you're really not moving the needle very much on a practical basis. Uh, hence, you're really not maximizing subcortical MSCs by puncturing the bone more. Really, and you're also not maximizing the perivascular MSCs either. So at the end of the day, it really doesn't uh, make sense from a face validity standpoint that this technique would get you any more MSCs. In addition, again, you've got a small site there. You're pulling a lot of pressure in a small site. So again, you're not yanking off anything else. It's not like you're diving in three or four inches um, and you can get something when you dive in a half inch that you that you couldn't get um, at three inches or vice versa. So the bottom line on bone marrow aspiration techniques, we've tested placing a second needle into the trocar to disrupt more tissue. That's not something I talked about here, but it didn't work. Uh, that was an 18 gauge needle placed through a trocar. We've tried uh, diving deep and periodically aspirating. Uh, there's even a $600 needle set based on that concept right now. Didn't work. Uh, we have tried multi-site uh, and lower volume draws. That works well. And syringe size, the moral of that story appears to be to avoid big 50 ml uh, syringes, which we, we've never used, but if you have, I'd avoid them. And what's always interesting is that as we test these theories, you know, what sometimes looks very valid at 20 or 30 patients, by the time we get to 200 is no longer valid. So I would be very, very careful on any white papers you see from any companies that show five or 10, 20, or even 30 patients. Because at the end of the day, until you get to about 100 plus patients, you really don't know what's going on as far as yield. And finally, there's likely no advantage to spending more than 20 bucks on a trocar as maximizing yield is about time, technique, and effort. It's not about the tool at this point. So thanks so much for watching. Again, this is something I'm passionate about because I've seen endless uh, physicians on the lecture circuit who have really never, ever measured the number of MSCs coming out uh, of their use of these various techniques. They've just used bedside machines, so they've had no idea at how efficient they are or inefficient they are at getting stem cells out. So I thought it was time to really focus on what we know, what we don't know. As of 2015, what's the best way to maximize the number of stem cells that you can get out of bone marrow? Again, this doesn't talk about other techniques like the two fraction technique that we use to get more stem cells out of what you've taken. But at least if you follow these general rules, I think you'll be able to maximize the amount of cells that you can get with the machine that you're using to extract the cells. So thank you so much for watching.